my dear friends, this is going to be a different kind of an ASMR video. You can see it's very serious because I'm not going to to accompany it with at least my my iced tea with a lemon. This is just for your information and education. I've made some notes here. I'm not your financial advisor or attorney. I'm not your dad. And I'm definitely not your mom. So you need to educate yourself. This is this video is about the recent hacks and cyber attacks against your personal information. It's it's a different kind of a video because I'm gonna deliver it in sort of a quiet, soft spoken ASMR style that I'm used to. And I've also read, as you know, that sometimes relaxed learning can sink in better than somebody screaming or, or shouting at you from a, a YouTube video or television, even though even though having your, your information hacked is a stressful incident. Let's try to make it as, as gentle as we can as far as the delivery. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I, I wanted to do this. So Monday of this week, Capital One announced that they had a lot of information hacked on their customer accounts. About 106 million people in the U.S. and Canada. So there we are. And that loss represented 140,000 Social Security numbers, a million Canadian social insurance numbers, and 80,000 bank account numbers, along with a lot of names and addresses. Nobody knows how many people really were affected. This was just the latest of, of these hacks that we've all become accustomed to. More recently, Equifax, Facebook, Google, and a lot of stores, department stores, all kind of stores have been hacked. Why does this matter to me? Well, obviously, it matters because I, in fact, I was hacked a couple of times. But also, I can go to my YouTube analytics and see that most of you out there seem to be millennials. My main audience that watches videos are from, from high school and even, and even grammar school all the way up to their 40s. The average age is probably around it's probably around the, the late 20s or so. Well, I happen to have a daughter and a son-in-law who, like you, are also raging millennials. So this matters very much to me. I have some notes here I'm reading from, but some of it's kind of technical. I try not to take very long, as I always seem to. This is why you should consider getting your credit frozen now. There's going to be no end to these hacks and these data breaches. This is something that will occur all of your life. A personal story. Back in 2015, someone hacked the personal records, personnel records, and security clearance files of several million federal employees and I was one of those. The government gave us three years of free credit monitoring and identity theft insurance. Well, woo-hoo. They always said it would be safe. The government says you're, they told us it was safe. When you give your information to the credit card companies or stores, you expect them to take reasonable safeguards but you know what? There is no 100% safeguard. Anyway, the government gave those of us affected a, a letter and a pen to set it up. It was one of the most frustrating things I ever tried to do online. I never found out if my information was compromised, and I don't even know if I set up my, my, my credit monitoring properly. Shortly after that, I retired after that 
that car wreck I was in where, I was, where my car was totaled and, and I was totaled for a while too. After Equifax happened t two or three years ago, the experts told everyone they should freeze their credit. It's the best way, the best way really to protect yourself. Credit monitoring and fraud alerts let you know there's a problem after you get after you get compromised. And ID ID theft insurance is the same way. But when you freeze your credit, supposedly no one can open an account in your name. And it blocks new lender access and prevents new accounts being established. But remember that existing creditors and debt collectors still have access to your information for debts that you already owe. But even after the Equifax hack, less than one out of 10 of all the people affected actually, actually froze their credit. And you know when your identity is stolen, I'm sure this happened to some of you, it can take a lot of money a lot of stress and years to straighten things out because the low life people who do this they don't care what happens to you or what kind of pain and expense they put you through that's why they're low lives pardon my language even the kids and the elderly, the elderly they're especially vulnerable. The elderly are especially vulnerable because they may not be paying attention to their credit or their accounts. And as you get older, your brain gets a little, a little slower. A little slower. Even children can have their identities stolen. And the credit card debt is the leading cause of bankruptcy. If you want to lift your credit freeze, you can to open like open a new line of credit. You, you can do so, or like to buy a car or a house. But you have to keep the same pin that you got when you requested the first freeze. At least that's what I've read. So if you lose it, it's another hassle. You can limit the time the account is open to prospective lenders if you want to borrow money for something or if you're applying for a new credit line or you can open the account to a special party that wants to check your credit you can open it say for one month or to a certain a certain creditor and then it will close after that after they've accessed it so I understand, but you have to you have to request each of the credit bureaus separately to freeze your credit. The three main ones are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You can get those numbers off the you know, Google them, of course. But you have to contact each each online by phone or in writing. You have to give them your name, address, your social security number, and date of birth. I know that's weird because you're going to give Equifax your, your, your information again after maybe they already, after they probably already exposed your, your information to somebody after they got hacked. So, I went in and I froze my credit. It was a bunch. it was a real pain. I thought you could contact just one agency and they would freeze it for for all three. But I'm not sure that's true. Unless it's changed in the last couple of years. Because I had to go to each one individually. And when the Equifax hack happened all of a sudden, everybody was trying to get online and call 
to freeze their credit. So the Equifax system completely broke down. They, if you went online, they gave you a, a pin, which is nothing more than the date and I think the last four of your social, something like that. And that's not a very good pin. And some people, some experts speculated that maybe Equifax just did that to show that they were proactive. Yeah, we'll give them a pin, their birthday or their last four of the social or, or whatever, just to show they were doing something about it. By the way, it was widely reported that a, a couple of the officials with Equifax at the top, of course, they sold their stock just before this that big hack occurred a couple of years ago. I also called in. Well, my credit counselor was completely clueless. She's been hired just just recently. They hired a bunch of people with no, with no training. She told me she hadn't had any any training really, not much. And she'd just been there a few days. She was very honest and open with me. And I knew, I told her I knew it was not her fault. You know, these people are working at minimum wage. They're all young too, or a lot of them are. People like a, a, lot, a, a lot of you out there just just making enough money to try to get by. So, this was uh, heavy on my heart, so I wanted to, to talk to you about it, to, to be careful with your credit, and there are many other things you can do, not, like not having a lot of credit cards, and it's better not to even owe any money at all, unless you're borrowing money for something like, like a, a basic reasonably priced vehicle to get to back and forth to work or maybe more particularly to buy a home that is if you think you if it's right for you to buy a home of course all realtors will say it's always right don't don't go by that and that's about it so if you think this is important, maybe you can forward this video to, to friends and, and family. It could also be your, your moms and dads or anybody that you, that you wish to see protected. All this has been out there for a long time. Everybody should know this already. But I just wanted to make this video to, because it was on my mind. It's kind of... I don't know if any other ASMR channels do anything like this. I've seen a couple that were role-playing. This is not role-playing. This is real life, and it's serious. Pardon my, my, what is it, going on too much about it, emoting too much, but it's very important. It's important to my to my daughter and my son-in-law and their friends who are the average age of of the people watching these videos so I guess it should be important to you because you're important to me also so that's all I have for this hope that you got something from it I tried to even though it's a very stressful and serious subject I try to live it, deliver it in a, a gentle way that perhaps you can, it will sink in more as you listen to it. This is Trip. Take care.